All right, welcome everybody back to the Kennedy Space Center. We are here celebrating NASA Social and the launch of NASA's SpaceX Crew 3 mission. I got an awesome panel with me today. Uh, I'm Joshua Santoro with NASA Communications and excited to take your questions today. That's gonna be a lot of what we're gonna do is just Q&A. Um, so we're gonna jump in here in just a second once I remind you all that we're looking for the launch of the Crew 3 astronauts Sunday morning, 221 Eastern time. Uh, Rajachari, Tom Marsh Marshburn, Caleb Barron and Matthias Bauer are going to be flying uh, to the space station for a long duration mission. Uh, super exciting. Uh, coverage will kick off 10 p.m. Saturday uh, Eastern time for that mission. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here with my guest. On my right, starting here is uh, Bob Cabana. Um, and the theme, I think, is uh, newly uh, promoted. Can I use the word promoted? <laughs> Does that work? Yeah, I guess it's a promotion. Okay, yeah. newly promoted Bob yeah. Cabana to the Associate Administrator for NASA. Uh, that's the highest ranking civil servant in the agency. So congrats on that. Hey, well, thank you, Josh. Uh, first off, it's great to be part of this amazing team. Uh, Senator Nelson's absolutely amazing. Pam Melroy, uh, be nice to the people that work for you because one day you might work for them. Pam, uh, <laughs> Pam was an astronaut candidate when I was chief of the astronaut office, and she's amazing. I think we got a great team. But it's really nice to come home to Florida, too, here supporting the Crew 3 launch. Awesome. Uh, and on your right is Cullen Manning, also newly promoted uh, to the Deputy Center Director here at Kennedy. Kelvin, thanks for joining us. Hey, it's great to be here, Josh. You know, everything seems to be happening here at the Kennedy Space Center. Our, our expendable launches, our human launches, and then we're getting ready for the Artemis mission uh, coming soon. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Yeah, good to have you. Obviously, Kennedy is a happening place for now, and it seems like it's not going to stop. Uh, it's busy. Uh, and on your right, we have uh, Woody Hoberg. Uh, Woody, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say newly promoted from astronaut candidate to astronaut. Uh, welcome, and, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's so good to be here. I'm so excited to watch uh, my friends on Crew 3 fly to space. Uh, I'm one of the Turtles, uh, NASA's newest class of astronauts from 2017, and uh, looking forward to watching my classmates, Raja and Kayla, as they fly to space. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you kind of first about that. Uh, obviously, it's a big deal. I think these are the first of your classmates to get to fly. Uh, what's that like to see two people who you started with who you've trained with, and now you're going to see them literally like fly into space? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a great question. I think every step of this journey has been a bit surreal. Um, so I didn't even expect to get an interview. And then I got an interview, and then somehow I got a final round interview, which seemed <laughs> quite surreal. And then somehow I got lucky enough to join the astronaut corps. And every step of the way, it, it kind of doesn't quite feel real till you're really there. And this is just one more step where, wow, my classmates are about to fly to space. That's pretty cool. Hey, Josh, just let me jump in. So I was on the interview selection panel that picked these guys, and uh, <laughs> Woody, Woody, Woody is awesome. You know, no doubt about it. All of them are awesome. Thank you, sir. Uh, since we're jumping in here, now, I agree. All of them are awesome, but I got to give a shout-out to Kayla Barron, class of 2010 from the United States Naval Academy, probably the only school that has the most astronauts of any other undergraduate institution. So I'll just throw that out there. Are you, are you beating Purdue? Because I thought it was Purdue. No, actually, <laughs> it undergrad, <laughs> Naval Academy. Oh, all right, very good. Uh, I'm assuming that you say that from personal experience? Uh, well, uh, yes. Being a grad, <laughs> I will throw that out there. Yeah, and for those that don't know, Bob uh, is a four-time space shuttle astronaut. Uh, 
uh, I'll, uh, question for you, Bob. Uh, what's it like to not be the guy on the rocket? Because I'm still expecting at some uh, point you're going to pull like no. a John Glenn and, and still hop on another one and get into space again. So John Glenn is definitely my hero. He was 77 when he flew his last flight, so i got a few good years left. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully having that happen. Now, um, and the hardest job I had when I was chief of the astronaut office was uh, assigning other people uh, to fly in space and going out to the launch pad with them. When you have uh, some of your closest friends on that rocket, on that ball of flame, going off into space, I mean, my heart's going like this. It's just it's an emotional event. It's so much easier to fly than watch your friends do it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just it truly is an amazing event. So if I had a choice, you know, I would, uh, I would love to be on that rocket. But uh, my hearts and prayers are with these guys going up uh, here early Sunday morning, and I know they're all going to do an awesome job. Yeah, three rookies on this flight, so uh, certainly nobody's questioning that they're up to the challenge, up to the task, um, but kind of an exciting thing that is indicative of where we are with human spaceflight and, and uh, this new evolution of commercial crew vehicles. Well, you know, and I, I want to point that out. Uh, commercial crew program is absolutely amazing. There are four astronauts on this uh, crew going up. We've increased the number of astronauts that we have on the space station now for these increments now that we have uh, commercial crew flying. And that increases the amount of science that we can do. That increases the amount of engineering we can do to prove the systems that we need to be able to go to the moon in a sustainable way, to go on to Mars eventually. So uh, this is really important that we have this successful commercial crew program. And what we really want to do is commercialize low Earth orbit and become one of many customers rather than being responsible for the whole thing so that we can focus on that hard job of establishing a, a presence in our solar system off our home planet. Awesome. Yeah, well, well said, well said. Uh, go to, going to questions we've, we've gotten here, so please feel free to send your questions in if you're watching online. Um, and this one for all three of you, Kelvin, we'll start with you. Uh, what's your favorite launch experience? So whether it be on a rocket or watching a rocket or a otherwise vehicle take off into space, Kelvin, what's your favorite launch experience? Well, Josh, I have to think back to the shuttle days when I was the flow director for the Space Shuttle Atlantis. My very first launch as flow director, I was the right-hand man next to the launch director. And following that flow to completion and watching it launch, and then when the crew returned, it doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, so, so start to finish, you were there front seat the whole time. Absolutely. That's awesome. All right, Woody, how about for you? Obviously, I know you're probably thinking ahead to when you get to fly, uh, but so far, what's your favorite launch experience? I've actually seen exactly one launch in person so far, <laughs> which was the launch, uh, the, the Crew 2 mission. So the mission before this, I was lucky enough to be out here at Kennedy and, and watch it in person. Like this launch will be, it was a night uh, launch, and it was spectacular. We were able to witness staging. We were able to witness the second stage ignition. Um, on just a beautiful night, and it truly took my breath away. Awesome. So, Woody, where are you from? If, obviously, if you haven't been around rocket launches, you're not from around here. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then uh, ended up spending some time in California, Washington, and Boston. Cool. Yeah, I know here at Kennedy, there's a lot of Pittsburgh fans. There's a shocking number of Pittsburgh fans around here. So, welcome to Kennedy Space Center. Glad to have you back for your second rocket launch. <laughs> uh, Bob, favorite launch experience? I have so many. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was privileged as a uh, as a midshipman at the Naval Academy to come down here on a physics uh, honor society. Took a field trip down. I got to see Apollo 13 launch, and uh, to see a Saturn V take off that that was special. Um, th the first shuttle launch that I saw was actually my first launch, <laughs> and uh, that was pretty darned amazing. Uh, I think the shuttle, you know, the. the the Falcon 9, it, it lifts off very majestically. The shuttle just got up and left town with those solids. And I tell you, what I'm really looking forward to is the launch of uh, SLS and Orion on Artemis 1, seeing that big rocket stacked up over in the VAB. And when those five-segment solids light and those four RS-25s light off, that thing is just going to be absolutely amazing. And that's going to be a real event. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, rocket launches, if you've, if you've been around, they're loud. You can feel them in your chest, and this is the SLS will be on another level. Um, so I'm excited to get that get that rumble of the solids back in at, back at the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, Maurice wants to know where are the astronauts right now, and what are they doing in the time remaining till launch? Sure. Um, I don't know exactly where they are, but they're here at Kennedy in quarantine and likely spending some time with their loved ones, um, with their immediate families, and just uh, enjoying a a little bit of maybe 
peaceful downtime, if you can call it that, before such a big event uh, where they can uh, just enjoy being with their loved ones and, and get ready for launch. So, so I will throw out that the crew quarters are over in the uh, um, Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building on the third floor overlooking the high bay where they build the uh, uh, Orion vehicle that used to be the uh, processing for the uh, Apollo. And uh, originally that's where crew quarters were for the Apollo program. And those rooms since have been modified over the years and we added more to accommodate all the crews going up to the space station and so on. So the crew is in isolation over there. And then there is a tradition. There is one house remaining out on the beach and uh, from when the uh, government took over on eminent domain to build the Kennedy Space Center. And uh, that became uh, a place of uh, refuge from life here at, uh, you know, preparing for launch and everything for astronauts just to get away. It's the beach house. And uh, walk the beach with their loved ones and just have some time to themselves. So I'm sure they're going to take advantage of that. Awesome. But Bob, I'll stick with you and ask uh, my nine-year-old uh, son, excuse me, question from Christina. Uh, she said, my nine-year-old son wants to know what it feels like to be in space. Oh, it's awesome. I wish I could get your nine-year-old son up there with me or any, any young child. It, weightlessness is just, it, it is so amazing. It's just effortless and you adapt so readily. It's amazing how quickly the human body uh, adapts to microgravity and then readapts to 1G. And, and the amazing thing is the more times you fly, the quicker you have that adaptation both to zero G and back to, uh, to 1G. But it, it's just, it's effortless. It is so fun. But the best thing about being in space is sticking your nose up to a window and looking down on the earth from a couple hundred miles high. It is just an absolutely beautiful blue jewel of a planet. Yeah. Kelvin, question for you. Uh, why is launch at 2.21 a.m.? We'd all love to get a little bit more sleep. So what's going on there? And uh, is it safer to launch during the day? Well, the launch, is, the launch window is determined by what the mission is. In this case, it's a rendezvous with the International Space Station. So orbital mechanics, I could tell you a little bit about that from my Air Force days. But uh, to make that all happen at this particular time, that's what's driving that nighttime launch. Is it safer to launch at daytime versus nighttime? In the event you did have some type of a contingency, uh, the rescue effort would be much easier during the daytime. So, so yes, but um, we're practice, train, rehearse, so uh, we can cover that contingency at nighttime as well. Yeah, very good. Uh, a couple questions for you, Woody. Uh, first one, what inspired you to be an astronaut? And, and it sounded like you got the interview on your first try. Is that true? Yeah, I was lucky enough to get the interview my first try. It's kind of funny. I remember as a young child having dreams and aspirations of becoming an astronaut. And then I remember kind of as I finished up graduate school, I got so involved and just deeply committed to all the things I was working on that frankly, I kind of forgot about that aspiration for a little bit. And then a friend of mine, uh, we, were, we were working out and he was the one that told me, hey, there's a call out for astronauts um, to apply we should apply. And I said, yeah, that is a thing I always wanted to do. Let's apply. But it's funny when I threw my name in the hat for that application process, I never, I, I mean, I never expected to actually get an interview. Um, it just felt like this impossible dream. And so um, I feel so lucky to have uh, had the chance to even, even to come interview, because what a fun process that is. Um, and then beyond that, to, to actually get the job. Is there something, sorry, Kelvin, I'll come back to you in a second. Is there something that inspired you, like, that made you have that desire, or was that just, like, you were young and that's what you remember? Uh, growing up, I always loved things that fly. Um, I built model rockets as a young child. I loved airplanes. I always wanted to fly airplanes. Um, and so I just always loved aerospace. I became an enge aerospace engineer in college, and I don't know, it just always seemed like something that's so natural and easy to be excited about. I don't understand how you could not love aerospace. <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin? But Josh, let me tell you about Woody here. I remember from the interview, so it wasn't just like little model rockets. You were building big model rockets. In fact, where people are getting suspicious because of the propellants required <laughs> to build these big rockets. And it's like, man, what a guy. <laughs> That's true, right? That is true. I was actually building these before I was 18. And they were so large at the time you needed from the, the ATF, the Bureau, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, you needed a low explosives permit in order to have the propellants um, that we were using in these rockets. And I wasn't 18, so I couldn't get the permit. So my father uh, 
was kind enough to uh, help me out, get a permit for us, and, and we were able to uh, pursue this amazing hobby. So for anyone interested in rocketry, the Tripoli Rocketry Association is an amazing organization uh, where you can go out and build large rockets, and um, it's an amazing community to be a part of. So moral of the story there is follow regulations, obey the law, get parental supervision, but have lots of fun and build big rockets. Uh, awesome. Other question for you, Woody. Um, congratulations first up. Uh, what did you get to learn from the crew three astronauts? And would you like to be on board a future mission to the International Space Station? And what would you do when you get up there? I've learned so much from the crew three astronauts. You look at this crew, it includes three rookies. Um, I think that's really special. What, uh, what better way is there to train for the missions we are going to do in the future, like going to the moon through Artemis? What better way is there to train for that than to go fly in space and spend six months living and working on the International Space Station? Um, to answer, yeah, I've, I've learned, I've lost track of the countless uh, leadership lessons I've learned from my classmates, Raja and Kayla, who will be on this mission. Um, and Yes, do I want to go? Yeah, I'd love to go. <laughs> so someday I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, and I'm looking forward to just the um, dynamic, varied activities that we have to do on board, whether it's doing science or maintenance or um, like Kayla and Tom will do in a few weeks, going outside on an EVA to replace a failed communication unit. Um, just that kind of dynamic, everyday, getting it done uh, attitude that has to happen up there. I'm really excited for that. Awesome. All right, question for each of you. We'll start here with you, Bob. Uh, where will you be on launch day? And more importantly, will you be wearing a Halloween costume? So I'm going to be over in uh, OSB2 with the administrator for the launch. I I'd rather be sitting on console. <laughs> and um, I'll be honest, I was going to, and I didn't. <laughs> didn't get one. But I had this awesome alien uh, costume that I think would have been just perfect. But no, I'm not going to be wearing a costume. All right, maybe next time then. Kelvin? So I'll be across the street in the Launch Control Center, uh, firing room four with the SpaceX and NASA launch team. I, I won't have a costume on. I'll have a headset on, but maybe uh, some Halloween colors, an orange tie, something like that. All right, that it. sounds like a good plan. I like it. I like it. Tom? Excuse me, Woody, forgive me. Tom's flying. He's not here. You're Woody. Tom, Tom will be on the rocket, and I will be uh, in OSB2 as well. Um, and I suspect I'll probably be dressed quite a bit like I am right now. Okay. Yeah, Tom will maybe be dressed for Halloween, but his will look more like a SpaceX flight suit. Uh, so anyway, sorry, Woody, about that. Um, uh, any tips for a future astronaut? So, and I, I'd be curious to hear from any three of you, because Kelvin, uh, as... I believe you've sat on a number of panels now to select astronauts. And so you may be able to provide us more wisdom and insight than anybody because you've seen behind the scenes. So I've been on the last three. And what we're looking for, we're, we're looking for people that follow their passion. You know, of course, you got to have the smarts. You got to have the uh, education. But the thing that a lot of people don't really think about, they don't think about, um, you know, doing things that they love, hands-on, uh, just being that all-around um, good person. And, and that's what I was really getting to, the ability to get along with others. A lot of times you don't think about that. You, got, you could be the smartest person in the world, but if nobody wants you on their team, then you're not going to make a, a, a great astronaut. Yeah. Bob or uh, Woody, any other thoughts there? Anybody, you, lucky, lucky socks, uh, good luck charms, anything that kind of gave you the edge? Um, I'll, I'll follow on. Uh, I, for me, I was pursuing a graduate degree in computer science, and my passion was search and rescue at the time. And I wanted to be off uh, doing search and rescue missions, and so I, I worked for uh, Yosemite Search and Rescue. And I bring it up because at the time, many of my most trusted mentors in academia advised me not to do it because they told me that it was going to distract me from the important career in academia that I was pursuing but I just really wanted to do it. <laughs> and I am so glad that I did and so grateful um, to be here now in an organization where for the first time actually in my entire career, these sort of two sides of me, a very technical side and a very operational side have been truly valued, both sides. Um, that's so special and it's such a big part of what makes human spaceflight possible, whether it's as an astronaut or a flight controller or 
any of the countless people that contribute to our mission here. So I'm going to pile on to what Kelvin said. You know, we look for people that excel in their field, having sat on a number of boards. Um, but you have to be a team player. And that is absolutely, we look for those skills. We look for uh, folks that not only do well in their field, but they also have an operational background. That, you know, they've got some hands-on work that they can apply. Uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, Don Pettit. You ask, how do you be an astronaut? First off, I say, you've got to be persistent. Don't give up. You know, I didn't get anything that I wanted to necessarily on the first try, but I was persistent and kept trying. Don got picked on his fifth try, but when Don was, I think he was like nine, ten years old, his brother went to the uh, junkyard and brought home an automatic uh, transmission for him to take apart and figure out how it worked. But, you know, having uh, hands-on skills along with uh, your learning and being an expert in your field and a team player, it, it's a lot to ask, but that that's what we're looking for. And having done things in an environment where you know, when you do something, when you make a bad decision, bad things can happen. You know, you've, you've climbed mountains, deep sea diving, flying airplanes, whatever. So having that background helps also. I'm so glad I got picked when I did. I, I wouldn't have been competitive in Woody's <laughs> class, I don't think. Yeah, I, I think for, uh, for Woody, your class, I think like 15,000 people applied. Yeah, the I think I, the number I remember is 18,000. It was definitely a big pile. Yeah. And that's why I say I... I truly didn't think I would even get an interview. Yeah, awesome. Um, so we got a question here. Thank you for answering our questions. I'm a senior in high school uh, and was wondering if there's a specific area of study I should focus on if I want to become an astronaut one day. So we obviously have some military background. So, We've got computer science, but what else do we have? So first off, to be an astronaut, you have to have a technical degree, math, engineering, or one of the physical sciences. But uh, I would tell you exactly what Woody and what uh, Kelvin said. Y you got to follow your passion. Uh, if you're doing something you're passionate about, two things happen. First off, studying's easy. You study because you want to study. You get good grades because you're passionate about it. And then when you do get a job, work's not work. My passion was flying. I wanted to fly airplanes. And uh, that I pursued that goal. And then I wanted to be a test pilot and use all the math and engineering I had in school along with flying. And that's what prepared me to be an astronaut. It wasn't... You know, I never dreamed I could be an astronaut. I held astronauts in such high esteem, but it was a progression from being a pilot to a test pilot that enabled me to be an astronaut. I, I kind of had that in the back of my mind when I saw Apollo 13 launch, but, you know, making it happen, that's another thing. So I tell folks that far out goal is kind of hard to reach, but there are intermediate goals that you can work toward. Work toward those intermediate goals. When you achieve it, then set a new one that gets you on that path you want to be on. But Follow your passion, like Woody said, man. If, if you're doing something you're passionate about, it makes life a whole lot more fun, and it's a lot easier to study and do well at it. Yeah. Uh, Woody, question for you. Actually, question for all three of you really quickly. Uh, is there a song that comes to mind when you think about a ride-out playlist? Uh, so our astronauts put together a, a ride-out playlist they get to listen to on their way to the launch pad. Mm -hmm. Is there one song that, that, off the top of your head, that you would say, I want to listen to that on the way? It's such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> There are so many. There's so many options. Uh, man, I um, I remember some climbing trips listening to Darude. Have you heard of this band? I haven't. Um, uh, great band. Um, I think that could be some fun play ride on music, but I need to All think right. more about it. What's the genre? Uh, it's basically EDM. Okay. All right. There you go. Listen, I'll get you amped up for launch. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Kelvin? Uh, for me, it would be theme from the Avengers, you know, with Iron Man, Captain America, all those guys, how can you not get pumped up listening to that? Love it. So I can't pick a song, but <laughs> it would definitely be something classic rock. I, I think something that really gets you going. Very good. All right, gentlemen, uh, we're about out of time. Um, really quickly, we have just a minute left. Uh, Want to get any final thoughts from the three of you? Bob, I'll start with you, and we'll just go down uh, again, trying to be a little bit quick here to wrap up. So it's awesome being part of this amazing team. Uh, I want all of you to come and be part of this. I want, I want to get everybody in America down here to see a rocket launch and see the amazing things going on at NASA. All, all I can say is, uh, you know, go, go Crew 3. Go, go Dragon. Go Falcon 9. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to get these guys safely on orbit to the ISS. Hey, when I was a kid, I didn't know anybody that looked like me, that worked for NASA. But NASA is the best place to work in the federal government for the last nine years in a row. If you have an interest in aerospace, we want you. We'd love to have you here. Thanks. Go Crew 3. I am so excited to watch my friends on Crew 3 uh, take to the skies. 
this uh, launches are always emotional, and this one, particularly when your friends and loved ones are on board, um, it's especially emotional and special. And so we wish them safe travels to the ISS, and our hearts are with them. Go Crew 3. Yeah, Go Crew 3. Uh, a big thanks to you for tuning in here. I uh, want to make sure that you guys know tomorrow, Saturday evening, 10 p.m., we'll kick off our broadcast coverage, nasa.gov slash live. Uh, we kick off at 10 p.m. because that's about the time that crew will be suiting up in their flight suits, and then launch is scheduled for Sunday morning at 2.21 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so I hope that you'll watch. I hope that you'll tune in. If you're in the area, um, step outside and watch. I know it's early in the morning, but it is beautiful. Uh, and there are humans that are defying gravity to get to space station and advance science for the benefit of all mankind, all humanity. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Until next time, have a good one.